question relates to what engagement have you had with the NTMA with regard to ensuring that the NTMA divest from all ISIF global portfolio investments in companies on the Human Rights Council database of enterprises and the expected type timeline for the total divestment and I say this in the context of the resolution that was passed more than eight years ago by the UN Human Rights Council. Thanks. Thank you Deputy Connolly for the question. Uh, ISIF which is a business unit of the NTMA is statutorily independent and is subject to oversight by its investment committee and the NTMA's board. My officials are in contact with the NTMA across a range of issues, including those arising from the, Ill the illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill on an ongoing basis. On the 20th of March this year, the Director of the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund attended the Committee on Finance, Public Expenditure and Reform and on Taoiseach uh, meeting on pre-committee stage scrutiny of the illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill 2023. At that committee meeting, the ISIF director outlined that as at the 31st of December uh, last year, the ISIF's direct investments in companies on the UN database totaled approximately €4.2 million Euro in 11 companies. He also outlined that the ISIF's indirect investments include eight companies totalling approximately €9.4 million. Euro. ISAF has since taken an investment decision to divest from six of these companies with a total value of approximately 2.95 million euro uh, involving a number of Israeli banks and also a, a retail uh, ch uh, Israeli chain. I understand that the divestment process has nearly been completed following the recent divestment on the basis of the risk present which presented. ISAF will continue to keep under review the alignment of relevant investments within its investment parameters and commercial objectives. In practice, this means that if any other investments have or are later found to have the same risk characteristics as those six companies, those other investments then fall for consideration for divestment also. As the Deputy will be aware, the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill 2023 is currently before the Oireachtas. Uh, the Government has not opposed that bill and its only formal decision in relation to it to date was to propose a nine-month timed amendment at Dáil's second stage in May of last year. Uh, this was in order to allow for the consideration of the issues raised by that bill, including alternative non-legislative based approaches or a combination of legislative and non-legislative based approaches which could achieve a similar outcome. Finally, following the expiry of the timed amendment, pre-committee stage scrutiny of the bill uh, by the Finpart Committee is ongoing and I await the outcome of that process, which I expect very shortly. Thank you for the update in relation to that. And as I said, the background to this is the UN Council and the particular committee which set out 112 businesses and that was published in February 2020. Since then, it has been reduced to 97. In relation to Ireland and the ISAF, they're relatively small given the overall investment uh, internationally by I ISAF. However, just I know it's an independent and I know they're experts and I know they're... Um, they're they're to get value for money and invest. But that's done within a policy, isn't it, of human rights. And so what I'm asking is what engagement you've had with the NTMA in relation to this. I welcome the fact that there's been divestment from six companies. Perhaps you might be able to explain to me, Minister, are those six companies, were they direct investment, were they indirect investment, were they pooled investment? And then again, why were those six picked as opposed to the total figure that's there? How was that done? And has the, it, it, um, the, dis, the removal of the investment been completed on those six? Thanks, Deputy. And um, perhaps if I, if I write to you with the detail of the investments that have been divested, um, the majority of what was announced has been uh, completed at this stage. I think you will acknowledge that um, uh, difficult and all and harrowing and all as the uh, issue is in terms of the occupied West Bank and the, war the, the conflict uh, and the terrible um, events that are happening in Gaza uh, because of the excessive use of force by uh, the Israeli Defence Forces. It's not the only ESG issue that will need to be addressed by the NTMA uh, in terms of the management of, the, of this fund, uh, but also uh, other funds. There are a number of conflicts, ongoing violations of human rights and abuses which are likely to have to be addressed uh, uh, in this fund and indeed uh, the other funds. I think it is important that uh, the commercial mandate, but fundamentally 
fundamentally the independence of ISAF uh, is respected and that they are allowed to make their own investment decisions uh, in line uh, with the mandate and that they retain primary responsibility for decision making. Uh, in addition, when it comes to the question of legislating, uh, we have and continue to examine this issue closely. There are quite substantive and important reasons as to why enshrining uh, the UN database into primary legislation as the reference point and the anchor uh, for uh, divestment is not a good idea uh, and I'm why happy not? to go into that in more detail. Okay. To read the reports that are there and I understand the difficulties in relation to that and suggestions have been made by the Department of Finance to establish our own database. What progress has been made in relation to that? But if we come back to this decision which I welcome, it, had, it has been done Obviously, they're operating in a policy vacuum, Minister, but it has come from dull questions and from pressure. And I would have thought there would be a reactive, uh, a, a proactive approach in relation to taking the responsibility seriously. This happened previously in relation to Deputy Pringle's um, legislation in relation to the Fossil Fuel Divestment Bill. This is really serious where our money is being invested. And so companies that are occupying the occupy in located in occupied territories by Israel, which is before the court, the International Court for Genocide, we must be seen to take action in relation to where we're investing public money, while acknowledging the independence of the NTMA and the, and the, and the IASIF. So I'm asking you again, what's the policy? Who are they reporting to? Who's monitoring what they're doing? Because asking questions like this is part of it, but there needs to be a proactive monitoring situation to ensure that we're not investing in companies that are part of a genocide, are part of the weapons that are going uh -huh. to ensure the genocide. Uh -huh. Uh, thank you, Deputy. The, the, the factual position is that ISAF is statutorily uh, independent and is subject to uh, oversight by its investment committee uh, and by the NTMA's board. Uh, under statute, I, as Minister for Finance, do not have a role in relation to ISAF's uh, implementation of its investment strategy. The investment strategy uh, does operate within an ESG framework. Uh, which uh, you have correctly highlighted. This is not the only ESG issue that they have to consider. Uh, I think it is very important that I continue to respect their independence, respect their commercial uh, mandate. Uh, and you mentioned the issue of fossil fuel divestment. As you know, the House has previously legislated in respect of uh, fossil fuel divestment, and that is also uh, reflected in the ESG parameters within which uh, ISAF operates uh, and is fully respected uh, by them. But I will write to the Deputy and outline further detail on all of this.